I have to say, I'm just gonna throw it out there. It's been a really crazy, really fun day here already. Thanks to some extra visitors joining us for today's show. Let me take you back a couple of hours. Earlier today, about 20 Studio 5 viewers arrived at KSL Broadcast House for a Learn Along workshop hosted by talented photographer Natalie Felt. Nat taught them how to take beautiful, frame-worthy winter photos outside. Now, after learning a few basic photo school skills excuse me, in the studio, the fun then moved outdoors for some hands-on learning. Okay, so who took the best photo so far? That's what I want to know. <laughs> right here, right here. How are you guys? I'm good, how are you? The Studio 5 Photo School, I was just a crash land participant for two seconds, but it lasted about an hour. These women, these really fun women, got to test out their photography skills on each other, and now they are here live in studio to show us what they have learned. Everybody, welcome to Studio 5. <laughs> You learned a lot, right? Like cameras in hand, you were snapping photos, you were working the grounds out there. I can't wait to see the proof in the picture. Also joining me, of course, our photo school teacher, photographer Natalie Felt. How fabulous is she to work with? You were so great to coach us through this process. And I know fun. we were focusing on snow photos. Why is that so tricky? Well, first of all, we don't have a lot of snow. Well, that. <laughs> That's tricky, but um, I think with snow, it's just a, it's a whole different picture outside because when you've got all this snow, you kind of have a, this blank canvas. So it's fun because you can play with it and do so many things and it doesn't take a lot to make your image pop because you have this winter wonderland background. So. How did those students of yours do? They did fabulous. They I mean, did you so have great. to say that they're sitting right here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They were really working it. I know they were really grateful for your tips, which you're going to share with us today. Yes. Kind of a learn along for our viewers at home. And we're going to peek in on your phones, your camera rolls and see how those tips really played out. Proofs in the picture, right? That's what I hear. First tip, Natalie, you say when you're outdoors in the winter season trying to take those pictures, you really do want to pause and compose your, your photograph. Yes, we talked a lot about that in our class and it was fun. Specifically, we talked about the role of th thirds where you're choosing to put your subject in different areas of the frame and not just the traditional right in the center of the camera. So it's a fun time to play because you've got all this snow around and you can move your subject around and really show what the surroundings look like mm -hmm. and also focus on that pop of color that stands out against the snow. All right, so the rule of thirds, by show of hand, how many of, this, how many of you found this a new piece of information? for picture taking. Yeah, right? It makes a huge difference in the composition. I want to talk specifically to Paige Christensen. Where's Paige? Hey Paige, how you doing? You put the rule of thirds into practice for this photo. We're going to pop her photo up on the screen. It's beautiful. Oh my gosh. See, you've got the negative space there. Nat, you're giving the nod of approval. Yes, yes. She did great. Paige, what did you learn in this process? Take lots and hopefully you get a good one. <laughs> <laughs> the more you take, the better chance they have of turning out. Look at the detail, too, on the hair. I know we're going to get into those details, but that rule of third really can make a big difference. Yeah. All right, tip number two, capture details close up. Yes, and the, one of the reasons I love to do this in the snow is because just, I don't know, just seeing all the details, um, like the snowflakes in the hair on the scarf and their hat. That's what that, I noticed. That really and just speaks to you yeah, and it Paige's stands photo, out. That's what I saw were the snow, snow sprinkles right in the yeah. hair. So what sort of details outside of just snow sprinkles are we looking for? I love to see um, getting close and seeing um, close on their face or their hands or seeing what they're doing, what they're playing with, all those little things aren't going to stand out when you're further back. When you're up close, though, your eye goes right to it. Mm -hmm. And it just it adds something that you wouldn't get otherwise. To me, it's the detail that brings the magic, right? Yes, all it right, tells no, a story. No pressure, but Mandy, we're looking to you to bring the magic. <laughs> what, what, what did you take away from her advice to draw in those details through your photo taking? Well, she just said that Far away pictures don't show some of the things that you know you see up close right. and for in our particular picture it was just fun to see our friendship and the laughter and the happiness that we share Look at this. together this with you. So my girlfriend Angie. She was here. We were all coveting Angie's yeah. pink coat. But enough so of fun. that. Look at those happy smiles, good girlfriend. <laughs> and the details there, the texture in the scarf, the fur around the face. That's what you're after, right, Natalie? Yeah, exactly. All right, the next tip is to step away and capture the scene. Now, we just talked about details, so when do we know when to pull back? You can do one of two things. Sometimes I like to start out with capturing the whole picture and then jump in close, and other times I like to do the opposite and get in close and then go back. But I feel like photography is the art of storytelling, and by capturing the two differences of close up and, and far back, you're, you're capturing the entire picture. How did the, the class do with this? They did great. It was fun watching them you play. You guys are getting A pluses all around. I mean, yes, there's not are. a bad report <laughs> card in the book. Let's talk to Kennedy, right, friends? Yep. What did you learn about scene taking and, and capturing the entire moment? Well, it kind of just like gives you the whole vibe of what the picture is and what you guys are doing, um, and it gives you that good background. I feel like so like we got the back of 
um, Salt Lake City, so it's kind of good with the buildings and stuff and a little bit of the snow. So. Yeah, look at the backdrop there, some cool cityscape. You've got the snow still and some a touch of nature, some evergreen. I think that because I love the candid detailed shot so much, I often neglect the background. Does that tell a large part of the story you were talking about we want to communicate? Yeah, exactly. I feel like a lot of times it is missed, and that's why it's so important to capture it because the details show something that's, that touches your heart, but without seeing the entire surroundings, you don't get the full picture. That's something I can work on for sure. All right, the final tip, give your subjects something to do. I know you're particularly passionate about this when kids are involved, right? Mm -hmm. The smile and cheese. I have a two-year-old, believe me, I know what yes. that looks like. It's not <laughs> what I want to put in a picture frame. It's not her most natural expression, but giving them props, you say, can draw that out. Yeah, exactly. It takes the pressure off the person you're photographing and off yourself if they're um, busy doing something. And, and don't be afraid just to tell them to run or jump or play in the snow or walk or laugh, giggle. Any of those things is going to bring out that those natural emotions. And it'll be easier to capture, like you said, their true smile, their true personality. Well, what about, though, from a technical perspective? Because if my two-year-old is jumping and laughing and rolling around, I'm going to get photos that are like a big schmear, a big blur. Yes, that's when it gets a little more tricky. When you're not using your professional camera and just your phone, it's going to get more tricky. So we talked about in the class using the burst mode. So holding down your shutter speed on your phone and just letting it take 20 pictures in a row. And maybe that one right in the middle is going to be, you know, a little bit more in focus and you're going to see the movement. And, and for those who don't know, you just hold down the little clicker on your screen, the mm -hmm. little button, and it will just capture, I mean, really fast, yep. rapid fire yep. photos. It's going to take, you know, you hold that down, it's going to keep shooting as long as you keep it down. So, so you help at least one photo in that bunch of 30, right? Yes. It will work out. It just helps the timing because if you're if they're throwing up snow and you're trying to get that perfect shot, you're going to be taking a lot of photos and it's going to get cold outside, but yeah. if you do go with that, then you're much more likely to get what you're, what you're aiming for. Now, I know trying to employ this tip with the class today was a little tricky because there wasn't a lot of fresh powder out there to work with, right. but I know, Catherine, you got a couple great shots that we're going to look at. Describe what you were seeing when you looked through your lens, looked through your phone. Yeah, so I used the burst as well because we had um, Kelly, my friend, take some snow and actually sprinkle it so it looked like it was snowing. Okay, that's the cutest photo ever. Yeah, she's she was Is good. Is that Kelly? Where's Kelly? Back. Can I be your agent? Put you in a J. Crew magazine, lady. That's adorable. Right? But how yeah. did you get that detail then of the snow? What was the trick there? I think the burst helped a lot because we went through and found the best one that wasn't blurry or so that that helped a lot. And I know a lot of these ladies were surprised when we signed them up for this photo school. School, They said, well, I just have a smartphone. Can you get great images these days on just a phone? I think you've seen that with all the pictures they've taken. They've that great, you really yeah. can do that. So sometimes it just takes playing around a little bit more, you know, taking more images than usual. But also, um, one other thing that we talked about in the class was using an app called Video to Picture. Mm. And sometimes you don't know, do I take the video of my pit, of my kids or the picture? Right, but you don't this, want to miss the moment. Exactly, but this app is also going to help you get those sharp images. What you do is you upload your video, and then you choose the portion of your video, and it's going to break it down into hundreds of pictures, and you can go in and choose which picture out of that video. Okay, where have you been so all my life? What's you're it called? Video to Picture. Video and it's a free app. Because so. just looking, I'm thinking in my head, Emmy's one-year-old birthday, she's blowing out the cake. The image I wanted was a motion picture. It was a moving picture. Right. I can freeze that, frame it, and call it good. Mm -hmm. You'll get a sharp image, and then it's like best of both worlds. You're going to have your video and your photo. So Give it up for Natalie, you guys. This is a fun day. It was so fun for us to learn along with you, so thank you so much. And you have more inspiration, I know, on your website. Yes, it's um, www.natalieveltphotography.com. It was so fun to learn from you through these wonderful ladies. Thanks for dropping fun. by, you guys. And we'll link you over to Natalie's website from ourstudio5.ksl.com.